So next, we're going to look at the working memory model. So this includes the central executive, phonological loop, visuospatial sketchpad and episodic buffer. And you need to be aware of the features of the model, including the coding and capacity of the model. So here we've got a diagram of the working memory model. So again, if you get a question, it asks you to describe the working memory model. You can draw the diagram, but if you are drawing the diagram, you do need to elaborate and explain what each of the parts do. So the central executive, the visuospatial sketchpad, episodic buffer, phonological loop. And you need to make sure that when you are explaining what each of these do, you are also including information such as the coding and capacity of the working memory model as a whole. So remember, it's focusing on short term memory. So if we're thinking about the capacity of short term memory, um, it's very small and I will go through the capacity of some of these specific parts of the working memory model. Um, so make sure that you talk about the features of each of the stores um, and the feet, the coding and the capacity of each of the stores alongside what they do, okay? And the information that they process. So you can't just draw this diagram down without elaborating on it to get full marks in a question. You need to make sure you elaborate by talking about the features of the working memory model and going into that in more detail. So the features, we've got the central executive, which controls the other components. It's involved in planning and problem solving and has a limited capacity. The phonological loop is involved in processing acoustic information. So this is written and spoken material. It's subdivided into the phonological store and articulatory processes. The phonological store stores the words that you hear and articulatory processes allows maintenance rehearsal. So repeating words in a loop to keep them in your working memory while they're needed. The capacity of this loop is thought to be two seconds worth of what you can say. So it has a limited capacity and it's two seconds of whatever you can say in two seconds. Then we have the visuospatial sketchpad, which processes visual, visual information. This is subdivided into the visual cache and the inner scribe. The visual cache stores visual data, the inner scribe um, records the arrangement of objects in the visual field. It has a limited capacity and Badley did some research in 2003 and suggested that the capacity was about three or four objects. Then we have the episodic buffer which processes information from different sources. So it processes information from our long-term memory, the phonological loop and the visuospatial sketchpad. It was added later, so it was added in 2000. It's a temporary store for information. Um, so it's there if the other components become overloaded or we need to combine information from different stores. It's something that's there which they added to try and explain some of the discrepancies with the model. It suggested that it has a limited capacity of about four chunks and this was based on some research conducted by Badley in 2012. The episodic buffer, buffer sorry, also links working memory to long-term memory and it also links to lots of other processes such as perception. Okay, so if you're Doing a diagram of the model to describe working memory, to describe the working memory model, you also need to include this information here. So you need to include the different parts and what they do. And you also need to include the coding or capacity of them. So like phonological loop, the coding is acoustic. Um, visual spatial sketchpad, the coding is visual information. Um, Phonological loop has a limited capacity of whatever you can say in two seconds, and the visuospatial sketchpad has a capacity of three to four objects. Okay, so you make sure you include that information when you are outlining or describing um, the working memory model. 
So then we've got research to support the working memory model. We've got the case study of KF. So KF struggled to remember verbal information. His memory for visual information was okay. So it shows that they're separate short-term memory components because his phonological loop was damaged, but his visual spatial sorry, sketch pad was intact. So what you need to remember for that is um, you can use the case study of KF to support the working memory model, but you can also use it to oppose the multi-star model of memory. We've got another piece of research that supports the working memory model, and this is badly um, the F study or a dual task study. This was a lab study tracking task. So you had to follow a spot of light with a pointer around a circular path whilst imagining the block capital F. So you had to do two visual tasks at the same time. When you were doing these two visual tasks, it was harder um, to complete these two visual tasks. And that's because the visuospatial sketch pad was overloaded. Both of the visual tasks were competing for the for space within the visuospatial sketch pad. But it has a limited capacity. So that's why it was harder to do two visual tasks. When they repeated the experiment using a visual and a verbal task, so getting them to follow the spot of light with a pointer around a circular path and then recalling a list of words, um, they found that the individuals did much better. And this is because there was no competition for the visual spatial sketch pad. So two sub subsystems, the phonological loop was used for the word list and the visual spatial sketch pad was used for the tracking task. And neither of them became overloaded so it was much easier for that individual to complete that task with regards to dual task studies and you'll see in the worksheet there's a couple of um exam questions um that use an item to describe a dual task study so you have to be able to read an item and identify if it is a dual task study um and explain the findings and the findings will be similar to the findings of Badley's study. So you can explain that as you would explain the results of Badley's research here. So alongside the information about the different parts of the model, we've got the research to support the model. In evaluation, a strength is that it's a more comprehensive model of short-term memory and it's got research support so you can talk about that badly study um, and this research support such as the badly study has high reliability and control because it's lab-based but it also has research support from case studies which have higher ecological validity so that's kf there so you've got a range of research from different sources and this research supports the key features of the model that there's a phonological loop and a visual spatial sketch pad uh, <clears throat> and one stores visual, visual information and the other um, auditory information or acoustic information sorry a strength of this is that it applies to real life tasks and it shows that memory is active so it shows that there's a two-way flow and um, it shows that memory is not passive like the multi-star model of memory suggests and it explains how we're all able to do multiple things, multiple tasks at once. Limitations, it only focuses on short term memory and it doesn't explain changes in processing ability that occur with practice or time. So I put HM star task here. So, for example, HM, although he couldn't create new long term memories, he could actually, with practice, create new procedural memories and it doesn't explain how things like that could happen so what hm had to do was he had to draw um a star um so he was given half a star in a mirror and he had to draw the other half of the star using the mirror which is a really difficult task but the more he did this task the better he got at this task and that doesn't explain the short term memory and the working memory model, sorry, doesn't explain how that would happen. It doesn't explain how we can get better at things with practice. It only explains how we can 
deal with information immediately in our short-term memory. So it can be seen as an incomplete model of memory. It is incomplete as well because it doesn't explain the long-term memory. It doesn't talk about the different types of long-term memory. It doesn't explain how information enters our long-term memory. It just focuses on how information is processed within our short-term memory. So it's still an incomplete model of memory. So we've looked at the multi-star model of memory in part one, and now we've just looked at the working memory model. So you need to be aware of the central executive, the phonological loop, the visuospatial sketchpad, and the episodic buffer, and then the features of the model. So the coding capacity, specifically the coding capacity of the phonological loop and the visuospatial sketchpad. Have a go at the exam questions, have a look at the mark schemes if you're struggling with those exam questions, see which bits of information you're missing. Um, also have a look at some past papers as well, um, just to see the variations of research. Maybe have a go for the multi-store model and working memory model at planning some 16 mark answers, um, just to see what they would look like and have a look at some past paper questions to see what they're looking for in the 16 mark questions. In the next part, we'll have a look at improving the accuracy of eyewitness testimony and we'll focus on the role of cognitive interview.